My name is Chad, and I live here with my wife, Melissa, and my one-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Sarah Kate. And we have three Mastiffs. Uh, the oldest one is Judge, the middle one is Lucas, and the youngest is Roman. The current situation is ridiculous. Chad thinks that dogs are people, too, so he tends to let the dogs do things that I would think that most dog owners shouldn't allow their dogs to do. Sarah likes to be in the bed with us. But the problem is the dogs on the bed, I'm afraid they're going to hurt her, so I don't feel safe doing it. The dogs have done some things um, where Sarah's been involved that are very scary to me. Lucas has, um, like, barked at her twice that I can think of. Do they sleep with you then? Yes, they do sleep with they us, do. absolutely. Melissa does not like the dogs in the bed. I care for them so much and such a part of the family, I want them to be comfortable. So she doesn't seem to like that very much. Right, when... right. No. I know, it's, it's not. It's okay. difficult, isn't it, sharing a bed with three huge, great big dogs? <laughs> I know, I know, I feel your pain. <laughs> there are three dogs in this household that have combined weight of over 500 pounds and a little 16-month-old girl who is in danger of being knocked down or worse. This is a serious situation. The dogs are also an unwelcome presence in the kitchen, where Melissa's attempts to keep them out have failed. I see you've got two baby gates here. I do not like the gates. There are times when the baby gates don't work for Roman because he has figured out how to open them. He'll sit there and nudge them with his nose until it pops open, and then he forces his way through it. Right. Chad, however, feels that the dog's gate-opening antics are worthy of reward. See how good they are? You know, he eats his thing. He doesn't chase after. He doesn't come crazy. And Judge, are you interested, Judge? OK, you can have one. I've always fed See, dogs always leftover food from our table, feed them anytime, in the kitchen, anywhere. I have seen her a couple times, like, offer him something. And he'll open his mouth like this, and then she'll try to put it back in hers. Do you and Chad argue about this? We do argue about it um, quite a bit, but you know, it seems that he wins out most of the time. Melissa and Chad obviously love each other, but there are problems where the dogs are concerned, and it doesn't seem to be well balanced. There doesn't seem to be a fair exchange. Let's just talk about feeding time. Mm -hmm. Having the dogs around the table, having Sarah feed the dogs, they're slobbering over her hand, she's going and picking another food. Do you know that a child or an adult can get E. coli and salmonella from saliva? And they can kill, wow. especially children. Right. When the family's eating, Roman especially is at the table, slobbering over the food, getting fed by Chad, slobbering over Sarah's hand when she hands him a treat. Disgusting. I'm with Melissa on this one. When you are eating or when Sarah Kate is here eating, no dogs in the kitchen at any time. Yes, OK. The baby gate still plays an important role, especially when Sarah Kate's in the kitchen. But I want to train the dogs that they have to stay out of the kitchen without the baby gate being there. Now, Melissa, I want you to start preparing food. I'm going to okay. keep the dogs out of here. Whilst you're preparing, keep an eye on what I'm doing. Chad, keep an eye on what I'm doing. OK. Uh, uh... Using body blocking, Victoria draws a line in the hallway that the dogs cannot cross. Chad, I want you to take a step back. Okay. Melissa, pretend that you're here by yourself. Okay. You're cooking. You don't want the dogs in. Okay. I'm going to stand next to you. Okay. You control it. Tell them to stay. Stay. Sit. Good boy. You can tell them to lie down. Down. Good, down. Good boy. Stay. Stay. After a few reinforcements, the dogs stay out of the kitchen on their own accord. It was great to have the dogs sitting outside of the kitchen area while I was cooking. That's going to make my life a lot easier. Oh, that's so difficult for them, because that smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa's got the technique down pat. But when it's time to sit down, it's Chad's turn to enforce the new rules. Oh, no, 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 Judge. Bad. Judge, come on. Judge, come here. Come here, Judge. Come here, Judge. Come on, big boy. I know you're. Come here, Judge. Oh, it's all right. Don't, it's all right. You don't have to don't fight hurt. them. Okay. Don't challenge. Come on, stay on. We're all going out. Come, Come on, on guys. good boy. Come back and tell them to stay. Stay. Body blocking works pretty well with these dogs, but they're big dogs. They can get past. If they do, 
they'll just go very calmly into the kitchen and get them to go out again. How does this feel for you, Melissa? Fantastic. It, it feels incredible to be able to do this. Back inside, Victoria wants to implement new ground rules in the bedroom. From now on, when you are on this bed, no dogs, nothing, at any time, ever. Okay. <laughs> How's that? It's good. I like is it, it. Is that really? A, is that a permanent thing? Though? It's a permanent thing, I'm telling you. I like permanent, the new permanent? sheriff. No, I'm telling town. you, it's permanent. They've been in that bed for nine and six years, respectively, and it just kills me when I see them that they want to get in, and I have to say no. So what I teach the dogs, I teach them to get off on a command. Victoria will work with each dog separately, but due to his arthritis, Judge will sit this one out. I'm going to train Lucas now to get off the bed. OK. OK? I want these dogs to love getting off this bed yeah. more than they like getting, getting on, on it. it. Right. Hey, come on. Oh, what a good boy. Off. Very good boy. Boy, Lucas. Uh -huh. What a good boy. Simple as that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. OK? And it keeps you safe. Mastiffs are so big, they're so heavy, there's so much stress on the joints already that I don't want to go too far with this training. But before Lucas gets a break, it's time for Chad to try. Lucas off. Good boy. Now, lots of cuddles Good and attention. Good boy, Lucas. Beautiful. Good doggy. Now, Victoria wants to try the same process with Roman. All right, so now he's got on by himself, OK? Same thing, just tell him to get off. Roman, off. Good boy. Good boy, like Roman. I don't keep on telling him off, off, off. He like was like, oh, I don't know, what do you want me to do? I just want to stay there. Stay pointing. OK. You don't want the dog to think that a command or a cue is a repeated word. You want the dog to take action as soon as you say something. Then it's Melissa's turn. Off. Roman. Just point and look where you're pointing and say nothing. Now, wait. Wait, and don't look at him. Okay. Roman took a little bit longer to get off for me. I do think that it will be a battle between us. So, now because he's whining, I don't want him to get anxious. Get down on the ground. OK. They come, OK? Get down on the ground. There you go. And show him that you've got the food in your hand. There. Good. Good boy. Good. He was confused. Your energy and your movement can help propel the dog. OK. I think Chad is going to struggle very much with not having the dogs in the bed. Can he manage it? I don't think so. As Victoria suggested, Chad and Melissa have reinstalled the baby gate while Sarah Kate is in the kitchen. Good dogs. The kitchen has been absolutely perfection. All I know is it's a lot more peaceful in here than it used to be, isn't it? Mm -hmm. With the gate up, we just leave them outside of the gate. Roman has tried to come through a couple of times, but he understands what we want. Back. Uh, uh, back. 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 Good boy. Back. No dogs in the kitchen. Melissa is definitely much more pleased now that we've got the kitchen under control because it's not only more sanitary, but it's also a safer condition for Sarah. Oh, Lucas, you want to eat? Come on. At the dog's mealtime, Chad appears to be heeding Victoria's call to take charge. I think Chad has um, taken on more of a leadership role with the dogs. Look at good boys. <gasps> what is he doing? Good doggy. I think that he thought that he could control the situation by asking the dogs up when he wanted and having them off when he wanted. So he kind of lost sight of the primary goal being Sarah's safety. Oh, Robin, you, Robin, you Robin. I can't wait to hear your excuse on this one, Chad. When Melissa and Sarah Kate leave, Chad finds Robin, out how little sit. control he has. Sit. No. Come on. Come on. Stop it. This is exactly why you need to have boundaries, Chad. Can you imagine if Sarah Kate was on the bed? You and I need to have a serious chat. I'm on my way back. With regards to the bedroom, why aren't you tougher about it? Chad's just very stubborn and selfish, and, and that's what he wants, so that's what happens. There was a big fight that happened on that yeah. bed. 
It's so obvious Chad always gets his way, but it's time that Chad grow up and see there's a reason why I'm being so serious about this. All right, now we got to tackle this bed situation. There's a reason why I said no dogs on the bed. One of them was Sarah Kate, okay, being on there. The second was Melissa said she did not want them in the bed. So why did you do it? I, that's a good question. I, I thought I could, I thought I could get around it and manage it, but I could. No, you've got to listen now. No more of this, Chad. Okay. You've got to listen. Okay. Because that fight that happens on the bed is going to happen everywhere else. It is. And your little girl is going to be in the middle of it one day. Yep. Wait a second. Again, I know that I'm going to go out of here and you're going to wheedle your way somehow and it's going to go back to what it was before. I'm going to put the rule in place now. Okay. No dogs on the bed ever at any time. Ever, ever, ever. Deal. That's the way. Deal. Deal. All right. We've got some other stuff to work All right, on. Let's, so let's get to it. Okay. okay. It was wonderful, actually, to have Victoria talk to Chad in that tone of voice, um, because he doesn't get that a lot. The areas that you still got to work on, especially you, Chad, is to keep those dogs off the bed. Yep. Off the bed. All times. So important. It's so important that you step up as a leader for your dogs. Rather than indulging them so much, be a leader. Yep. I think Chad realizes how important it is that he keeps training his dog, because he's got to think of his little girl first. Best of luck. Thank Thanks. you. And no, 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 you <laughs> cannot go out the door with me. Yeah. Thank right. you. Bye. Bye. See you. I thought I was, came into this with thinking that, you know, I kind of knew some of the things and that, you know, pets were people too, and that they were pack animals. But Victoria and her positive reinforcement and understanding kind of really what her perception is of dog's behavior has really changed my whole mindset. Good boy. Come on. Since Victoria's been gone, um, you know, our lives have changed for the better, yeah. I feel. 100% safer in this house with the dogs in the house with Sarah. Well, man, good boy. There really haven't been any more scraps uh, in terms of for Roman and Lucas. Roman's time. I think with Victoria's advice of letting them know when it's each one of those times to have, you know, kind of socialization with Melissa or I. And everything has been wonderful. Ah! Stay off the bed, dogs. Ah. It's really sweet to have Sarah sleep in the bed with us. The dogs are not in the bed ever. Hey, Sue. It's clear that Chad still has a lot of work to do to correct the mistakes of the past, but at least he's taking steps to ensure Sarah's safety. If he could apply that dedication to all of the training, he's going to have happy dogs and a happy family.